goldbroker.com own real physical gold and silver bars stored outside of the banking system. Good morning, my name is Dan Popescu and on behalf of goldbroker.com I have the pleasure today to talk to Guillermo Barba. Guillermo is a Mexican economist and follower of the new Austrian School of Economics. As a journalist, he is the author of the Global Financial Intelligence blog. He is also a gold and silver market analyst, financial commentator on Channel 40 TV, writer on El Financiero and blogger on Forbes Mexico. Buenos dias, Guillermo. Buenos dias, Dan. How are you? Fine, you? Fine, thanks. Guillermo, we have uh, quite a lot of things going on right now in, uh, in the global economy yeah. and also in the gold and silver. Uh, I would like to get your perspective uh, being in Mexico and also uh, covering and having a lot of people following you from South America. Uh, we usually hear uh, Americans, uh, the European perspective, Asia, but we don't get very much about uh, uh, South America and Mexico. And from my understanding, Mexico is the biggest producer of silver, and I think it's the, in the first 10 in gold. Uh, can, you, can you tell us a little bit, uh, how do you feel about the gold and silver market right now? Well, yes, you, as you know, uh, Mexico is, a, is the biggest producer of silver in the world. But unfortunately, in Mexico is not the highest consumer of gold or silver in the world. That's a pity, because Mexicans love love silver. But you know the the most known or the most yes yeah, the most known silver coin is the Libertad silver coin. You may you may know it the Libertad one one ounce of silver. Yeah, I have one for you. Ah, Libertad, excellent. Thank you. Well, the uh, Mexicans um, buy about eight hundred thousand uh, per year uh, of those those coins. So that's not a large number. In fact, so Mexicans uh, like silver. The Mexicans do not love gold, like India, for example. Mexicans love silver, but our consumption of of, of gold of silver for investment is very very low. So I think it's in general, uh, you know, Mexico is the second largest country in Latin America. So unfortunately, for Latin Americans, gold and silver as as an investment is almost unknown. Uh, so it's it is a pity, of course, because you know the current economic situation is so weak, so weak in the world. We have a, a a new global crisis that is coming, and we have to be prepared. And so, in order to be prepared to protect our 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 purchasing power to protect our assets, we have to have we need to have gold and silver in physical form as an investment. And Latin Americans are not really protecting themselves against this. In this next crisis. So, uh, so that's why that's one of the reasons why I started my my blog some years ago. My blog is in Spanish, is Inteligencia Financiera Global in English, Global Financial Intelligence. By the way, I started a video blog two weeks ago or so in English. But uh, the reason why I started my my blog in Spanish is because uh, uh, yes, Mexicans and Latin Americans are not very familiar with gold and silver as an investment, as a protection. So uh, it, it is necessary to, to give them the message that the world is in a, in a economic, uh, economic situation, that the world is in terrible shape. So we have to be protected because uh, a global war could be coming, you never, you never know, or, but you know for sure that a new global crisis is coming and that will look the last crisis in 2008, 2008 look like a campaign. Guillermo, uh, you have, uh, there is a, a great uh, uh, follower of silver and gold in Mexico, Mr. Hugo Salinas Price. Yes. And he's done quite a lot of work, from what I understand, trying to convince the, the Mexicans and also the government of Mexico uh, to, to introduce the, the silver, uh, uh, silver coin. Uh, what's his uh, success up to now? Uh, what is your feeling about that? Well, of course, I am supporter of the monetization of Libertad Silver Ounce too. I support uh, Mr. Salinas' proposal. I, I support it. I support it. But the problem in Mexico is that the Bank of Mexico is, a, is, a, is a, let me say it this way, it's like a lackey of the Federal Reserve. So they 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 prefer to have their assets in dollars. They they're happy with the dollar. 
you know Mexico is a neighbor of the United States, and maybe this one this is one of the reasons why they they like to be like yes, I like lucky of the United States, mainly of the Federal Reserve. So they say we're okay with the dollar. We don't need gold and silver. We don't need to monetize silver. But of course, this is a mistake. But uh, unfortunately, uh, every time that uh, lawmakers have uh, all have been close to appro to approve this proposal in Mexican Mexican Congress, Bank of Mexico's Bank of Mexico comes and say, oh, you know, it's not a good idea. It's a terrible idea. We don't need it. It could cause many problems. People could uh, make fake coins made of, of silver and, and a lot of a lot of uh, things that Mexico Bank of Mexico says. And in order not to, do not to let the the proposal to be approved in the Congress. So it's 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 a very very big problem, but uh, we should monetize uh, silver, the Libertad silver coin in Mexico. And by the way, in other countries, there, uh, the proposal could be applied in any country in the world. It could be applied in Greece, in in Europe, in Central Europe, in North America, in North America, in Canada, in China, whatever, in Russia. We you don't only need a a, a small coin, a silver a, a small silver coin to monetize. Uh, yeah, I invite you to know the proposal. It's it's very easy to apply in any any part of the world. And it it could uh, give you give the people the the power of uh, of protecting themselves against the for the the loss the against the losses of the pushes in power. Because you know in this moment all major central banks in the world are printing currency like crazy, so uh, uh, they uh, they are creating. And at the moment, they are not creating inflation, but deflation. And some people say, oh, you know, gold and silver are a hedge against uh, inflation. So if we are in the, on the verge of a, of a deflationary, deflationary crisis, we don't need gold and silver. That's a mistake. In fact, gold and silver are necessary in, the, in inflationary crisis, but they are indispensable in deflationary crisis because we're talking about the, the, the risk of the complete collapse of the monetary and financial systems. So in, in that case, and that will happen eventually, you need to have gold and silver physically because uh, they, are, uh, uh, they are private property. They are money, real money, a, a real asset and a very liquid asset. So you, you, you think that you have money in a current account? Well, you, you, will, you could be very surprised that, you, that your, your money could disappear okay. in, in a moment. How uh, are people talking about in Mexico as it's talk in United States and Europe, especially since uh, Cyprus crisis of confiscation of savings uh, of uh, gold or silver? Is that kind of a talk uh, in in Mexico? We seem to have that around the world. No, I I, I have to say that no, this is no very known in Mexico. So we we don't even in Mexico in Mexican media don't even talk about that. So I think that some people have asked me if if eventually Mexico could confiscate gold and silver. I don't think so. You know, the uh, here politicians in Mexico are not that smart to know that uh, gold and silver are, are money, and that unfortunately, of course. The, so I think that Mexico is. In some, to some degree, uh, more or less safe country to store some gold near the United States. Of course, we have the problem with security. But if you place your gold in a, in a secure vault in, uh, in, for example, Mexico City or another part of, of of this country, well, your your risk of confiscation is actually very low. If I think you have a, a higher risk of of confiscation of, or, or the, you, you run a high risk of losing your money if you you have uh, cash in your in, in an account because of, yes like in, it could happen that the, your 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 money it's not money actually you have the, an IOU from the bank so the bank owes owes money to you so you you don't have uh, you don't have money in a, in a current in an account bank. You have a promise that the bank will pay you. Yes, probably they will, but they will pay you in a, in the case of collapse of the, of the monetary or financial system. They will pay you in paper money, in the exact in the very same moment that the paper money will be in crisis. So you need so uh, every investors need port, uh, gold and silver physically in their portfolio.
you are a student of uh, a Professor Fekete and yes. uh, you follow their services uh, of uh, Sandeep uh, Jaitley. I also do it. They follow very much the backwardation. There is talk again yes. about backwardation. What's your view on backwardation of silver and gold? Yes, thanks for asking. This is a very, very important issue, uh, Dan, because m most people follow the price of gold. And yes, the price of gold is important uh, to, to some degree, but uh, the, there are the other two indicators that are far more important than this, the gold and silver prices. And that those are the gold basis and the co basis. The basis and co basis were created by Professor Fekete and Sandeep Jaitley. In Sandeep refined, let me let me tell you this. Sandeep refined the definition of the basis. You, you know, you know I, for our, our listeners to understand a little bit uh, more what a, a, a basis is. Basis is the difference between the offer price for delivery in the impending future and the bid price for delivery on the spot. So the normal situation of the market is contango because in gold and silver, gold, especially gold, is uh, the commodity with the highest with the highest stocks to flow ratio. So that means that that there is always gold in, in there are enough um, so, uh, supply of gold in the market always all the time because you know uh, gold is not burnt is not thrown away it's always hoarded in a way or another or another. So there are always plenty of, uh, of supplies of gold in any part. So the, the normal the situation of the market is contango because the uh, because of this the, the 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 abundant supplies of gold that are in the world so that they are in the world but sometimes happens that backwardation occurs and that means that there there are there is a scarcity of gold and and that is quite uh, that's very abnormal that's not normal because you know, there are always plenty of uh, supply of gold but when it, you, how is it possible that you could have uh, this uh, a scarcity of gold? Well, then it is very important. The only way that you can have scarcity of gold is because the so-called strong hands, the investors that buy gold to, to not to not to not as a speculation but as a, as a protection, they buy a buy and buy gold, and especially when the, when the prices fall. They don't want to sell gold because they think that the, the price doesn't reflect the value they they think gold has. So in these cases, you have a, a scarcity of gold that's very, very abnormal because people say, oh, you don't want to sell my gold, you know, and there, uh, be more, there are more people that are willing to buy gold than to sell it. So you have this scarcity that is reflected in the so-called backwardation. That happens, backwardation occurs. According to the definition of the New Austrian School of Economics, when the spot price is higher than the nearby futures contract, so because it's the most active contract in terms of open interest, so uh, this is the, the most important contract, the nearby contract. So uh, when a backwardation occurs, and meaning that the spot price is higher than the the, the most active contract, futures contract, well, you have uh, this and scarcity of gold. This scarcity of gold it was reflected too in the go for rate, in the, in the gold offered uh, gold offer forward rate that you know the LBMA is not anymore publishing them. Exactly. So, so the, uh, we have almost uh, very, very few sources or uh, you, we have very have sources of, the, of information for gold and silver backwardation. So I recommend you to follow, yes, the Professor Fekete and Sandeep Jaitley, because, of, of course, my blog and video blog too, because you have to know what's going on in the, in the gold and silver markets in terms of backwardation. Remember, gold and silver bases are far more important than the, than the price of gold. The price of gold sends you a message, but the gold and silver uh, back, uh, bases and co-bases tell you what's going on in terms of scarcity or uh, abundance of, of, of supplies of gold in the market. And, and then this is very important because the gold and silver are, are going into hiding. And that's happening exactly uh, because and the, the all major central banks are, are debasing uh, the, the currency. So eventually the, the smartest, the shrewdest uh, is main investors 
know that it, this is going to end in a, in a mess. It's going to be a, a financial mess. So you have to, to take your money out of the banking system in the form of gold and silver as a protection of, of those crazy ba bankers, central bankers. Can I ask you for a, for a last question because I don't have much time. I would like yes. to ask you about we, we, uh, the Swiss bank, uh, central bank started a, uh, actually accelerated the currency wars uh, in January. So uh, what, how do you see the role of gold uh, and silver in this currency war that seems to be, it seems to be the year of, uh, of incredible currency wars, but we don't see very much the war going in, in gold at the same time as the currency uh, wars? Well, yes, in terms, maybe in terms of price, but in terms of, of, of physical demand of gold and silver, it's staggering, especially, especially in the Far East and mainly China, of course. So this is very important then because, you know, yes, the currency wars, what, what does currency war mean? Well, currency war means that, you're, that the central banks are, uh, say, uh, will print more currency than ever in the history of the world. So they, they, they want to destroy the, 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 their currencies because they think, they think they are wrong, of course, that they, they stimulate the economy by devaluating the currency. They, they are not stimulating the economy, but destroying it. So they are destroying not only the, uh, the economy of a country, but of the entire world because they are destroying capital. I invite you to know the, the theories of Professor Fiquete uh, because he explains how these uh, uh, open market operations by, by central banks are not creating inflation, but in fact they are creating defl deflation. And by creating deflation, they are destroying capital. So eventually, they, they, they think they are right, of course, because they follow their own theories. So in order to, uh, to improve the economy, in order to stimulate the economy, they, they will destroy the, the financial and monetary system by creating money out of thin air in unlimited amounts. So this is currency wars. One, one, one country says, oh, you know, you are going to devaluate our currency because we, this way we stimulate the economy. In other way, you want to stimulate the economy too by devaluating. So they are destroying the world. The, the capital of the world. So you have to be protected and with gold and silver because you are with gold and physical gold and silver, you're out of the, of the matrix, you know? So well, you're out of power. They can create currency and in a limited amount, but they cannot create, and they, that's why they hate gold, but they, don't, they cannot create physical gold, out, gold out, out of thin air. Okay, Guillermo, sorry, that's all the time I have. I will always, I, I wanted for a long time to talk to you. Uh, thank you. On behalf of uh, goldbroker.com and myself, I would like to thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. So, thank you, Dan. Uh, gracias, Guillermo. My pleasure.